Hey everybody, I'm Michael DiTullo and welcome to my studio. Today will be part one on a three-part series from my friends over at Autodesk and Wacom showing how I use some of their tools in the process. I really wanted to show how I use my Cintiq and the different Autodesk products at different points in, in my process when I'm developing ideas. Now there's a lot of things that happen outside of this process in terms of research and refinement and working with clients, but this will show you a little bit of how I work through initial ideas, how I refine those ideas, and how I get them up to kind of a presentation level. Let's dip into the first episode here around thumbnail sketching. So typically when I start on a project, I like to really just blow out ideas in these little thumbnail sketches. So in addition to doing all of my research, maybe even interviewing end users, I'll start working out these little idea sheets like this, sometimes selectively ignoring parameters and sometimes bringing different parameters in as I go along. So for this exercise, I specifically chose a smartphone it really feels like the smartphone category has almost consolidated around the market leader in terms of design variation. And even though as long as they have essentially one flat side to act as the screen, they could be anything in the world, they seem to have just become these rather blank boxes. So I thought this would be a fun topic for this series. When I think of something that goes in the pocket, I think of something that should be a little bit ergonomic and a little slippery so it could actually get in and out of the pocket quite easily. And I don't know about you, but I feel like if something is designed to be a handheld device that comes in and out of our pocket maybe hundreds of times during the day, maybe it shouldn't need to have a case to be an actual functional object. So I'd like to design something that is maybe a little bit more robust, a little bit rounded off to, to uh, help prevent cracking. Those, these radius edges I think will help in terms of minimizing cracks when dropping and just a little bit more friendliness. Right? I think these objects have become some of the most important objects in our lives and I feel like they should be a little bit more expressive. So these phones would be for a brand that isn't afraid to take some risk um, and the end result of that risk could be displacing the market leader. And I think when you're a challenger brand, you really have to try to disrupt the marketplace with a design that's iconic and memorable. I think so often when I think of this category, the devices become almost completely forgettable. And if you take the minimal logos that are on there off, you really wouldn't know which brand makes which product. So with this exercise, I wanna to try to correct that and create something that's a little bit more memorable and iconic and visually impactful. Something that kind of creates some desire. Something that really is, is similar when I think of when the iPhone first came out, that object created that desire where people were like, I just have to have that. And I remember I was working a corporate job at that time and all of us had Blackberries that were company issued and we were trading in our company issued Blackberries so we could go out and buy iPhones. So. How could a company do that again with a product that's just as desirable? So to do these thumbnail sketches, I'm using my Wacom Cintiq Pro along with Autodesk Sketchbook. And I find this is a great way to just kind of almost take notes as I go. These, these sketches really aren't for anyone else. I, I typically wouldn't show these sketches to the client. These are for me to think on the page. Um, I think we have a tendency to kind of think in our heads and a lot of times good ideas never make it out into the world. And so these thumbnail sketches are a way to sketch and iterate really rapidly. Um, you can see like they're not that precious. I'm just working up multiple ideas across the page at the same time and really just trying to get as broad of a swath of ideas out onto this one image as possible so that I can select some to refine. Now in the normal process, I would select four or five, maybe even six of these concepts to refine really nicely and then show to my clients. For this process, I'll just be taking one concept and bringing it into CAD in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode on thumbnail sketching and I hope it shows you why you should step back from the process and 
take the time to explore a variety of ideas. And I hope you join me next time when I dive into Fusion 360 to refine one of these ideas. All right, see you next time.